Brethren, peace of the Lord. We're going to open up our Bibles in John. Gospel according to John. Chapter 1, verses 1 to 4. This next verse will be Bible, the living word, and the Bible, the living word. Right? This is a new topic. It's been spoken a lot this year this last few months and you might ask and what is the difference is in Bible Bible yes but there is a factor that is very important that if we don't give uh, room for it in our heart for what is this factor of uh, the importance we're going to not give the proper worth to the word. We're not going to leave the word. Right? Like the previous study, they saw everything. They participated in everything. They were witnesses. But they forgot the great operations of the Lord. The stronger hand of the Lord. Amen. John chapter 1, verse 1 to 4. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and with Him nothing was made that was made. Let us read together verse 4. In Him was life, and the life was the light of man. My brethren, this, this verse is speaking clearly about the person of the Lord Jesus as God. We know that the Lord He was the author of everything. He was present in everything. And in eternity, the name of Jesus is a word. Let's open in Revelation. Revelation is 19, verse 3. Revelation 19, verse 3. Nineteen thirteen, actually. He was clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. In eternity, the name of Jesus is the Word of God. And this was the name attributed to him. He was the verb of God. He was the Logos of God. He was the Word of God. And the Word also tells us that the Word became flesh and inhabited amongst us. Jesus, He emptied Himself for man. He left His glory in the moment of need. He left eternity. He became man because of our sins. He came to the world and here He overcame our greatest enemy. No one else could do this. That's why the Word says that Jesus in eternity is called the Word of God. But here, when He came to the world, He received a name, Yeshua, which means Savior. Jesus is the Savior of man because He came to um, make effective the project of the Father of saving men of bringing men to live eternally in the presence of God and if we follow in the word we will see that Jesus he is part of the entire project the word of God it shows from Genesis to Revelations 
the person of Jesus. He is the topic, the most important topic of God. And through the Word, we, will, we are discovering the project of God to save man. Because He is from the beginning. And when He came to the world, we see in Jesus the person of God. We see Jesus as God, because He is God. And we see all the attributes they are related to God in the person of Jesus. Which are the attributes of God? Who can tell me? One. One attribute of God. Um, he is all-knowing. He is almighty. He is omnipresent. Isn't it true? Eternity is a, an attribute that is related to God. This, most importantly, eternity it is an attribute uh, exclusive of God. No other being is eternal. No other being can be eternal. You know why? Because what does eternal mean? Why is this attribute exclusive of God? Because a person, when a person is eternal, this attribute eternal means it, it has no beginning or end. And all other things, they were all created by God. By the Word, God created everything. Man, man can be immortal, depending on his uh, spiritual situation. If he accepts Jesus, he can become mortal. But he will never have this attribute of eternity. It's only God, only the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, they are eternal. The angels, they are not eternal. No other being can be considered eternal. Receive this attribute. And we can only see this in the person of the Lord Jesus. Because the Word says that from eternity to eternity, He is God. Only God is eternal. And we are going to spend an eternity in the presence of God. Because Jesus came to the world, He died for us, and opened up this path. So that man is, can no longer be mortal and live eternally in the presence of God. And only Jesus can do this. So now, let's go to slide number two. Here it is. So we're going to see the origin of the Word. What is the origin of the Word? Where the Word originated in eternity. Why? Because the Word was from the mind of God. The Word was completely inspired by God. So the origin of the Word comes from eternity. Because then the whole Word, when it's divinely inspired, let us open and Timothy 3, 16. First Timothy. First Timothy. Oh, my brother. Bom, pastor. This is not this light. <laughs> okay. It got complicated. Second Timothy three sixteen. That's not this one. Slide cinco, pastor. Slide cinco. Second Timothy three sixteen. Whoever open can all scripture. Second Timothy three sixteen. All scripture 
is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So we see that the entire word, the origin of it is eternity because it came from the mind of God. It is, doesn't come from man's mind. There's, there is any human aspect here. The Bible has approximately 40 writers, 40 men that lived in different decades and different centuries, but only one is the author. The Bible was written 4,000 years from Genesis to Revelation. And we'll see how it is that the word, the topic is always the same. That's what it shows to us that the Bible doesn't have any human authorization. It was all inspired by God. What is to be inspired by God? God blew on man's ear and the man wrote. The author is the, is the only one, but the, ri the writers, there were many. There were 40. Right? And the topic. What is the topic of the word? The topic of the word is Jesus. The word of life has this topic which is very important. Is the word is the person of the Lord Jesus. And we see the Lord Jesus and the entire word. If we begin to see the Bible, to read the verses, the chapters, the story, we begin to see Jesus always there. Want to see an example? <coughs> Jesus is from the beginning. He's in the, in the death of the Lamb. Jesus is also on the ark. We find Jesus also down there on the departure from Egypt when the Red Sea was open. We see Jesus doing the walk of the people in the tabernacle. We see the person of Jesus in the wine, in the water. We see the person of Jesus in every aspect of the word. He was a fourth man that entered with the friends of Daniel. When the fire, the furnace was there burning, he was the fourth man. Jesus is always present in the Word. So that's the topic from God. There's no other topic. There cannot be another topic. The Word of Life, the topic is only one, it's about Jesus. But the word of life, it contains a mystery. And this mystery, it needs to be discovered. If we don't discover this mystery that is contained in the word, you know what is going to be left? Only stories. Only stories. And there are many stories. Can you imagine 4,000 years of stories and characters of the Bible? Forty writers writing the story of the Bible. It's a lot of stories. That's why the Lord our God gave us the Holy Spirit, who is the interpreter. The altar is God. The topic is Jesus. And the interpreter is the Holy Spirit. Because it was the Holy Spirit who inspired he is the one who blew on man's ear so man could speak about the topic but the Holy Spirit that makes us understand the word also, we're going to speak about the, the topic also still if we pick up any other topic in the Bible and if you don't have 
the understanding, the revelation of the Holy Spirit, the clarity given by the Holy Spirit. We're going to remain the story, and we're going to run the great risk of opening up a new denomination. You want to see? Let's pick up another topic from the Bible, the word Saturday. Isn't it true? God instructed men to keep Saturday, right? Isn't it true? Right? Yes. Okay. Where is it in the Bible? In the commandments. Isn't it true? The day, the day of the rest, Saturday, is a day that needs to be kept by men. The Word tells this. Who's keeping Saturday here? <laughs> uh, uh, Sister Christiana, she keeps <laughs> Christiana. She Christiana. She, oh, she keeps the Saturday. Oh man, too. Uh, so much faith. Oh boy, that's true. Let's go. Besides Sister Christiana, uh, anyone else keep the Saturday? No one else keeps the Saturday. Isn't it in the Bible to keep that you should keep the Saturday? Didn't everybody say that you're supposed to keep the Saturday because it's an instruction from God, it's an order from God, and nobody keeps the Saturday? Why is it? Because Jesus is our Saturday. Jesus is our rest. Jesus is the one who brings to man the eternal rest. If we believe in Jesus, we truly will be delivered, will be free. The Word says this. That's why, in order for you to understand that Saturday is a day that needs to be kept. The Word of Life says that we need, you need to keep the Saturday, but in the Church of Pompano, nobody is keeping the Saturday. What is the reason for this? Because the Lord has already given us the understanding. The Holy Spirit has opened up our understanding regarding this topic. The Word of Life says one thing. But the Living Word, it shows us a different aspect of the Word of Life. That's what I want to show you. The Word of Life is very important. That you know the Word of Life, and you know that the Bible... The Word of Life, it's very important. It is uh, fundamental in your spiritual life. But it, it is necessary that the Holy Spirit reveal to you the mystery that is contained in the Word of Life. And when the Holy Spirit does this, you will understand that the Word is a life. It's not just a story. It's not a story of a nation, a story of a people the story of a church, the story of a family, no. This is the story of a people that is being prepared by God to live in eternity. Only the Holy Spirit can show you this, only an interpreter. Only the Holy Spirit can open up your vision, open up your understanding, your mind, and make you understand the word beyond the letter. Because the word says that the word, the letter kills, but the spirit vivifies. The spirit gives life. The spirit is what removes, it takes the the story from the Bible and shows you the prophetic, the revelation of Jesus, the revelation of Jesus in the word. Uh, Jesus as a mystery is what makes you understand what is the prophetic and allows you to accept the prophetic and allows you to leave the prophetic. Whoever is simply with the word of life, without a, a spirit of understanding, without a clarification from the Holy Spirit, it just keeps one day. It just keeps one day of the week. Let's see here. People does this. They keep one day. But who is living the word as the living word? They keep Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, 
Thursday, Friday, and Saturday and Sunday. You know why? Because Jesus is everything for us. Jesus for us is the topic from God. The Holy Spirit already revealed to us when we accept this, we accept Jesus every day. Seven against one. <laughs> it's not a soccer score. <laughs> Seven one. Because <laughs> this is the score when Brazil lost uh, the World Cup. Everybody's laughing here. Four years ago, was crying, <laughs> murmuring, <laughs> complaint. <laughs> that's it here it is difference between the word of life and the living word Jesus is a topic of God Jesus is everything the word of life it brings an understanding of the project the word of life without inspiration without the understanding from the Holy Spirit, it shows you a project. It is important that you know this project. It is important that you know that there is a life beyond this life. It is important that you know that there is an eternal Father. It is important that you know that there is administration of God in favor of your life. And there is also spiritual weapons that you can uh, get a hold on um, if there is a consultation on the word it is very important that you know this that the word of life which is the Bible alone it does this it opens up it shows you it presents to you something that you never heard about before which is the project of salvation to men of men that's why many times people go to a service, they participate in a service, they leave this place delivered. Glory to God. Jesus is everything that I need. Today, the service, that message, that uh, song spoke to my heart greatly. I need to leave this. Tomorrow and the day after, they already forgot. They don't even know uh, what the text that was read. And, and from the Bible, the message that was preached, was the song that was sang, because at that moment, the person simply um, became aware about the word of life, which is the Bible. It is inspired by God, written by man. But now, the living word, which is the revelation, which is the understanding of the prophetic is the explanation of what is prophetic from God, which is the intention of God, it operates with efficacy. Because the Holy Spirit, when it speaks to man, it operates in the interior. It operates in the interior. The Word of Life, it allows you to show externally. If you read the Word, you know that you cannot uh, curse, you cannot lie. You cannot deceive anybody. All of it is exterior. And uh, this, for a while, you can keep the appearances. But if you don't have their, the visitation of the Holy Spirit, if the Spirit speak with you, the Spirit, Holy Spirit bringing you to living a life of sanctification, it lives, it was, and ends up being left behind. Then you go back to the evil practices, and then you go back to doing of what you used to do. But when the Holy Spirit reveals Himself to you, uh, uh, the topic of God, and it presents to you all the will of the Father, and you give room for the Holy Spirit to inhabit in your heart the Word, which is the Word of Life, which is the story of the Word of uh, God, it becomes alive in you. And God begins to operate with efficacy in your heart. And this operation comes from inside out. It is a transformation. It is a change of life. Because the word of God is this. 
is a new way of life. And you begin when you least expect. You are now completely changed. It is a change that remains. When you are in the Spirit, for as long as you uh, allow the Holy Spirit to operate in your life, the efficacy of the Word, it will have an effect in you. Isn't it true? So here is the difference of the Word of life from the living Word. Because the Holy Spirit is the one who gave us the Word. He is the one to clarify the Word for us. God, when he, he brought Jesus to the world, Jesus, he had his family here. You cannot use this slide, right? There's so many. I practice so much at home. <laughs> I gave you the wrong one, Elias. The, the fault was the computers. <laughs> when Jesus was here, He had his family when Jesus was going to be baptized in the waters. Who baptized Jesus? John the Baptist. John the Baptist was what from Je from Jesus? He was the cousin of Jesus. He went to baptize Jesus. He didn't know. He didn't truly know who Jesus was. He preached. He was a preacher. He was the last of the prophets before Jesus. Isn't it true? But now in John, he says, when he went to baptize Jesus, you know when he truly understood who Jesus was? When the dove came down on him. When he saw the dove came down on Jesus, he realized the call of Jesus and why he came to the world. Until then, Jesus only knew Jesus as a cousin. That's Jesus, son of Mary. Isn't it true? He was his cousin. Maybe he would, they were even playing together when kids. And the uh, family gatherings, they were all together. But when John the Bapti Baptist was there preaching about the arrival of the Lord Jesus that was going to come, when the dove came down to, on him, then he realized that he, he is the Jesus. He is the Lamb of God that removes sin from the world. That's why we only be able to understand and in, in truth, why Jesus came to the world, when the Holy Spirit, who is the interpreter, will reveal this to you. If you don't have the revelation from God, if you don't have the understanding, clarification, the Bible is simply a book, like any other book. When, when there is operation of God, when there is a revelation of the Holy Spirit, it stops being just any kind of book, and it begins to be the living word, a revelation of a product, eternal product. That's why we will always have this. When you pray to the Lord, every time we read the Bible, you will see Jesus in the entire word. Because Jesus is the topic number one for the church, for our lives. And the first thing that happens when people walk away from the Lord when a person leaves this project, is to deny, they deny two things. They deny the blood, and they deny the word. The first two things that the, the person stop talking about, they, and stop giving worth, they, those are exactly these two things. But the word says that we will be, we will be victorious through the word and through the blood. Revelation says that the church will be victorious. It doesn't say that we might be victorious. The Revelation said that the church will be victorious through the blood and through the word. That's why we are blessed. That's why the church of the Lord is chosen by God to live this. That's why my brother and sister, these two teachings that have been brought today here, they are to show us the importance of us being inside of the project of God. It doesn't exist any other place. There isn't any other topic more important than this and this moment that we have here living in the presence of the Lord. 
And if you want to live an eternity in the presence of God, if you want to stop suffering this world, if you want to uh, avoid the things of the world from being victorious in your life, you just need to accept Jesus as He truly is. The topic from God. Amen. Let us sing a song. to Jesus. Glory to God. I'm going to have a word of glorification to the Lord. Lord, I want to praise your name for this teaching, for this invitation for the part of our God, and for this project of salvation. We praise the Lord because you know the God that we serve. We know where we are going. We praise the Lord because we can say that you have helped us until this point. The grace of the Lord has been enough for us every day. We praise it because we have the sustenance from our God. We praise it because every day we not only have taken care of us, but also you have taken care of our family, our children and grandchildren. All of our, our family members, you have protected the Lord. We thank you for these blessings that extends to our family. We praise you for everything in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask you that you may receive our glorification, our praises, that you continue operating in the hearts, give us, giving us the complete understanding of this eternal project. Remove, Lord, any doubt, every questioning, and operate faith in each heart here present and that we you make us desire be willing to always be in your presence and that we may be sensitive to your voice that we may hear a voice speaking to our hearts is a prayer that we say in the name of jesus amen amen 
five minutes. We're gonna have five minutes for who wants want to drink a little water, and then we'll participate on the supper, supper of the Lord. Thank you. 